Abu Bakr Sadiq was today stabbed to death when some MPP youth stormed the Asawase constituency office, welding machetes and destroying everything on site. The riot is said to have ignited by rumors that the Asawase executives were in favor of Fola Foko's reinstatement as chairman of the party. Party members who support a focus suspension marched to the offices of the NPP to deliver their message that NPP is not for a focal. Constituency organizer of the party spoke to Joy News earlier on. Just come this morning. We we'll just come with the, just lock the office. So chairman just call us. She come and open the office. So unfortunately, we reach here. Even the chairman said he never reached here. I come here with the youth organizer, with one of the polling station as a member. So we bring someone. Happen to the come and open the office. So the guy just come and open the office. They just left no where they just salam here. There, there are many problems in the street. If you are an MPP, if you are not a fan of the Nanadu, for leave the party. That's what they are saying. I think everybody is here. They even collected my phone. They use even that. I'm not the second cry before my. I'm not seeing any paper here. There, eh, eh. But thank God, see, so far as our people's here, the group on my paper witnessing, and until you are for eyewitness on party office here, see everything they are scattered, everything scattered on party office here. So ultimately, the member, I know all of them. I know all of them. Are they, are they party uh, members? Yes, I know them. They are part. Members, I'm sure we are always we are all here. We are also part members. Me a medina, me a part of the member, me a coordinator. See, so we are part in ma. Fortunately, I'm saying Nura, you go Accra. Me me go Accra. You know, organize you to go Accra. No, you put it. You go present it. You part of it. You can't tell me. You put it. You go present it. You present it. You have to peace. Peace, me here then. You have to. I'm only here to come on here then. So we are dominant. You go part of it. You know, you don't mean so. And I can't deny you. I'm present in petition. And I sign it. Me, I thank God. I witness. I go hand. I'm only here now. I'm here. I'm thank God. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go. A uniform. They put them on the chair. But I'm going to take three times. I am so much more here. I'm so sorry. They say in China on campus. I'm so sorry. I'm not the number one. I'm not the number two. I'm not the number three. Is he a party chairman or anything? Party chairman. I'm not the number one. I'm not the number two. Well, there are still questions about how this happened and what could have prompted the killing of Abu Bakr Sadiq. Let's get on to the phone line now and speak with security analyst Dr. Kwesi Enim. Good evening. Thanks for your time on today's big story. Well, good evening. So it appears that uh, this is getting serious now and, and one, of, one person is now dead. All of these over Afoko. This brings to two people who have allegedly been killed because of chairman of the NPP, uh, Paul Afoko. Your reaction to all of these? Well, I mean, this is shocking. It's, it's criminal and it undermines or it gives a terribly wrong picture of the nature of our politics and the style of our politics. Let me try to explain. Political party engagement is about shared values and shared norms and critical leadership that ensures that, that the actions of a political party and its supporters are rule-based. What we are seeing are criminal elements and criminal activities that is threatening the facade of political party engagement, and of course, our democracy. Under no circumstances, should an ounce of blood be spilled because we have political defense. And if a political party is unable or unwilling or incapable of dealing with hotheads and radical elements, probably deliberately recruited to intimidate others from expressing their democratic right to voice a different opinion, then that is very problematic. And it looks to me as if 
if we are beginning to see such intrapathy violence, such disturbing levels of violence within political parties, where supporters must, technically speaking, be sharing the same view, then what happens after 21st November? And already the, the utterances from political party leaders across the spectrum is very disturbing and is giving signals that such atrocious criminal behavior will be condoned. And I think it, we must make it clear that it must not be condoned and that we must separate the criminal action and elements from the political action. And, and I'm hoping that the Ghana Police Service and its officers can apprehend those who committed this extremely criminal act, highly unacceptable and a very sad day for the NPP and certainly for Ghana's democratic process. Dr. Enin, more worrying is the fact that the rank of uh, Paul Afoko as chairman or not, is not showing any signs of ending. Um, what, what would you recommend for the NPP to kind of resolve this issue? Well, I mean, one is a, is a leadership issue. What is it that happened for such drastic decisions to be made? Because it looks as if in the act itself, there doesn't seem to be consensus about the decision taken by the net. And as to whether that meeting held by the constitutional and had the authority and the gravity. But this the contestation around that became to take an ethnic dimension within the people are saying if when it goes to our turn, look at what they have done. So I think it depends on the leadership of the party to begin what are the sentient voices. They may be even in the minority. But it, they've got to listen to these dissenting voices and say, how do we heal the emotional head arising out of the decision to expel or to suspend the party chairman? But it looks to me as if, from what happened at the Sawasi today, two deaths over this issue is beginning to get out of hand. So would you advise or would you agree with people who say that Paula Foko must go for the party to have some peace? Well, I don't think as an outsider who does not have access to all the inside documents, I can draw those conclusions. The only conclusion I can draw or suggestion I can make is that I think the party leaders must demonstrate that this party is big enough to have the, the attention views, that those who have other views that the majority are still part of the party, they can be tolerated and they can be given a space within which they can also contribute. And I think it looks to me as if with the increasing violence and what happened at the headquarters, national headquarters a couple of days ago, the attack on the Secretary General's party that is beginning to get out of hand, that this is not the party that has projected itself as a liberal party, as a party that wants to build a property-owning demo, uh, democratic uh, class. It looked as if the rhetoric and what's inside the party's document is very different from its action. And I think it is that lacuna that the party leadership must be but, but, but many people will argue that this is an MPP problem, and so we should leave it to the NPP. But should we be worried, from where you sit, um, about the bigger picture, the 2016 elections? Yes, I think we should be worried. This is not an MPP uh, problem. Political violence within a political party in this country is a Ghanaian problem. Precisely because a couple of days ago, a senior member of the National Democratic Congress, I think it's Mr. Alotu Jacob, I think cautioned the MPP that they were not the only party that could be violent. Okay? So it looks to me as if the discourses around party supporters' willingness to use violence as a tool first to acquire political power and intimidate their political op opponents cut across the two major parties. And that sends signals to our partners outside 
that probably we should even come invest in this country right now because things are beginning to get out of hand and that we need to wait until the, the elections have been dealt with. So these, these sporadic acts of violence that we've seen in both parties during their primary, you know, the use of voodooism, occultism, threats, actual violence, I think gives a very negative impression about Ghana to the outside world. Well, many thanks to Dr. Kwesi Enin. We really appreciate your time on today's big story. Let's continue with our conversation. And our correspondent, Prince Apia from Love FM, actually gave an account of what caused or what led to the stabbing of uh, Sadiq Abubakar. Let's listen to him. Yeah, Abubakar, Sadiq, uh, with a, a little information that I've gotten, uh, I've been nosing around. Uh, what I guess is that this man um, is in his 30s. Uh, he's not officially married, but he, he, he is with this lady called Aisha for close to six years. I didn't have any children now. Um, he works at magazine, so I'm amazing. Uh, he's one of the art stars there. And uh, uh, he's a part, party faithful. He's a loyal member of the party. And, an elderly woman, a blind elderly woman who on her lap... Um, a young man died, um, has told those around that anybody who talks to uh, her, she will catch the person. So as a result, the information I, I have is very scanty. What I'm told by the wife, the, the, super, the, 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 the lady she's been staying with for close to six years is that he went to work, uh, and he left to work to the National Health Insurance um, Authority to fix his health insurance. Uh, uh, um, status and card. So he was there when he had a call that uh, uh, the party headquarters had been um, attacked. So he came to see for himself. And when he came, uh, unfortunately, he met his uh, uh, untimely death where uh, these uh, supposed angry people stabbed um, also party members, I'm told, stabbed him uh, uh, several times. And then he, he died. Um, I'm, I'm told again that. Um, Yesterday, we all know that the party um, headquarters was locked up, and um, the constituency um, office was locked up because um, the, some of the angry supporters were, were saying uh, that um, the um, chairman, I.K. Brenya, you know, passed mm. some people to Accra to protest um, Paul Apoko's suspension. And they're saying that that is um, bad on his part. They think that he's dividing the party and he supports. Um, uh, 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 he's supporting one side against the other. So uh, they came here in the morning, rode in machete, they came around, sacked the place, so that this person was part of those who came yesterday to lock down the place. So he was against the king of uh, the place to be. So that is why he came back. That is the information. And that is why when he had the information, he came back from work to see for himself, and unfortunately, um, he was stopped. Uh, on the phone now is Dr. Opoku, Dr. Opoku Edusei, he is a pol uh, political science lecturer. He's joining us in the conversation. Many thanks for your time, Dr. Edusei. Dr. Edusei, if you can hear me, you are on today's big story. Yes, good evening. Dr. Edusei, two people have died, have allegedly died, um, um, reasons being Paul Afoko, should Paul Afoko be chairman or not? And uh, so would, would this justify those who are calling for the stepping down of Afoko so that there can be some peace in the party? Well, first of all, I must indicate that uh, this is a condemnable act of surgery and criminality. And as the flag bearer of NTP has indicated repeatedly, um, Nanado doesn't expect a single blood to be uh, basically be, be dropped or come out of a person because of his ambition to um, become president of Ghana. But it seems that it's not even just an allegation. Uh, persons have lost their lives because of the act of criminality by some persons who are affiliated to other persons in the party. Um, I think that at this point, the police must be made to do their investigation, and then anyone who is found culpable or, I mean, allegedly involved in this should be punished in accordance with the laws of Ghana. 
But mo let's look at the bigger picture uh, and the fact that uh, there are people who feel that this act could be perpetrated by their opponents who wants the party to remain in chaos. Y you think that can happen? In politics, you don't rule anything out. But at this point, I will not uh, support situations of pointing figures at persons. I rather support the police to uh, conduct their investigation thoroughly and deal with the situation as it is. That whether the persons who are allegedly involved in it are members of uh, MPP or they belong to the opposition party, um, I think it's a matter that borders on the security of the state and the police should be allowed to do their investigation. And so uh, looking at uh, this um, cracks in the NPP, we know that Nanado has just ended a rise and build tour, which is supposed to mend these cracks. But here we are, we're still at this point where we're seeing yesterday um, some NPP supporters vandalized or stormed the NPP headquarters requesting for Afoko to be reinstated. Today we're hearing this all because of this reason. So what is uh, the implication of all of this on, on the fortunes of the NPP in 2016? Well, so what I will indicate is that these are disturbing stories uh, for now, but they will not justify the end for NPP, in that uh, the party at this point is transitioning to a new level. And I believe by um, the end of the year, these matters would have been resolved for us to have uh, peace of mind to um, basically campaign for 2016. So at this point, um, these stories may come up. But one sign also is that the narratives that began uh, a month ago, those narratives have basically toned down a bit. And now persons are beginning to acknowledge that the party is in transition. We have new uh, leadership in place. And the structures of the party, as the flag bearer has continuously indicated, must be made to work. Well, we know the NPP has condemned this act, uh, showing that they're not in tune with all of these happening in the party. But let's look at um, how the party can move forward, because, of course, hope is not lost yet. Uh, they still have some time, about 10 months, to campaign towards 2016 election. How can the party put together their bits and pieces and, c I mean, unite and start um, conversing for votes for 2016? Well, I believe for now, two things must be um, driven home. First is that we must let our, pers our members, uh, members of the party know that the party is governed by law and that any disagreement in the party uh, should not be waged based on thuggery and criminality, but it should rather be actually be articulated based on law and respect for rule of law. So if you disagree with anything that another person has done in the party, follow the due process. The second bit is that the leadership of the party must uh, sit up and then enhance its communication strategy. I mean, for incidents of this nature, uh, we expect that the leadership should actually crack the whip and then deal with miscreants who have come into the party to cause confusion. You know, in the past, when the, um, persons like Darucha and Alajete um, spoke, realized that there was calm. Uh, it seems everyone thinks that NPP has not gotten leaders, but we have. We are very credible leaders, and the leadership of the party must crack the whip on such persons so that they will know that the party is there for, um, to form the next government and not there for persons to drag the party's name into disrepute. Well, many thanks to you, Dr. Poko Edusa. He's a political lecturer. We're really uh, grateful for your time on today's Big Story. On the other line is Wing Commander Sogoja Retired, uh, who's also joining in that discussion. He is a security analyst. Good evening, Commander. Good evening, my dear. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Grateful for your time on today's Big Story. But we're getting... Um, all of these news coming in and which is very alarming and more seriously is the fact that it doesn't look like it is going away now we have two people who are dead all of them allegedly died because there's uh, some fight whether Afuku should go or not to go and that's why these people have allegedly been killed how do we re resolve security 
in the NPP, outside the NPP, and even the bigger picture, the general elections in 2016, we're all eyeing? Well, well, what I could say is that uh, violence anyway is not good enough. Um, if I take my man back to one of pretty young boys in Kumasi, the violence between NLM and then CPP started with just a stabbing situation, you know, between Shumesi and Kha and Yabako. It started all the violence with some of their witness to the extent where dynamite and Nice were being used. So we should try and eliminate violence in a political thing. <coughs> no be whichever party, whether it's NPP, NDC, or CPP. Because when it strikes out, you can't control it. There are other hands around who always want to jump in situations like that. And when it starts escalating, it can then involve the whole country. I am hoping if this uh, situation back in Somalia is, is aligned to the NPP, then they must sit out a bit and see how they can try and, 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 and solve the little problems they have so it doesn't get out of hand. It's certainly worrying, but what practical steps can the NPP take? It's obvious um, the, the issue may, they, they, they may be overwhelmed with the issue. What practical steps can the party take to resolve well, some of these issues? Well, currently, for those of us that are in or out, there needs to be a clear cut. Um, Two fronts, a focal in, a focal out situation. And I think there's no situation in this way that cannot be solved by Georgia. They should find a way out. They should find a way out to not destroy what they've been aiming for. What they are aiming for is power, but this thing is going to disturb the peace within the side. Now, at the end of the day, they are all bound to regret what happened. So they should find a way to solve that problem. A focal in, a focal out. And if you don't take care, then other side of it, like the, the, the kind of crime we are seeing now, murdering people and stabbing and so forth. And I said, it was brutal in Kumasi, very brutal. And it started with just a stab, which can we about it. There are pr uh, speculations, uh, uh, Wing Commander, that um, the opponents of the NPP may uh, be part of this. They may be perpetrating this act just to make sure the cracks in the party does not end any time soon. Is it possible? How possible? It is, it is possible. You have provoc provocateurs there. But if they don't, they don't study themselves, how can the opposite side get in? You have to start it for the opposite to take advantage if it's true that they are doing it. If the situation is not there, they can't just jump out and start to treat the other camp and doing things similarly as if there's no peace in their camp. So it's essential that they stop out the problems they have within their camp so that other side doesn't get opportunity to go and perpetrate things which may be found to be maybe they are doing it. Wing Commander, there are people who believe that this issue shouldn't be left to the NPP and say this is just an NPP issue because it's, it's a, an issue that has the potential of also mining the 2016 general elections. What can we do? Should government come in? You see, <laughs> we all belong to the government. I'm not talking on party line. Every store, once you born from your mother, your property, or the country. And this thing is this thing being, it, it, it happened. It become criminal. So the police should go in and transport the rate and let, let it take its course. That's the only way the state can get in. But the party, as I said, could sit back and see how they can stop this in degenerating. But crime has been committed and the police should get in. Well, many thanks to Wing Commander Patrick Sogojo. We really appreciate your time on today's big story. I must say that the New Patriotic Party has condemned the act of uh, the man believed to be a member of the party in the Asawasi constituency. And Friday, Director of Communications of the uh, party, Nana Komiya, in an interview with MyJoyOnline.com, described the murder of Abubakar Sadiq as unfortunate. The party condemns it according to him. We don't know what kind of provocation people came under for people to use lethal weapons on themselves. It is not on. We want the police to investigate quickly and bring the perpetrators to book.
We earlier on also spoke with uh, Secretary, Constituency Secretary uh, of the NPP, uh, Mr. Sam Pine, on the polls. Let's listen to what he also had to say. Yeah, I've tried reaching the Secretary and um, the Chairman countless times to be non successful, but I've sent men to the ground to get intel for us. Um, what I can tell you is what we are all gathering from. From, 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 from social media and the public that yes, there was a scaffold between some people and one was stabbed. And unfortunately, according to the reports that we gathered, I've lost the line. So far, that's what, that's what I've gathered. I'm yet to receive any further notice. And when my people that have sent give me information, I'll write mm -hmm. to the police to ascertain what's actually transpired. And when I get the consensus of this to give me a a, a, a proper briefing, then we can all tell the story as it is. But this so far, the intel that I gather is that the office is broken into, so I really ask um, the people around to make a formal report to the police so they can protect the place. Um, I don't, honestly, personally, I don't know that guy. Um, I've got it about three names. I'm yet to get the, 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 the right name or the, the correct identity of the person. And if, if he's one of us and ask custom demands we need to visit the family and if if it's anything political mm. then i have every cause to be worried to but be worried. if it's a criminal or it's some thuggery or some um, uh, mob activity or some gang activity that would be a matter for the police to also tell us but if it's about our politics that we we we, we, we have in our then definitely Unless maybe I'm not human, I need to be very much concerned. So they need to keep their calm. They need to keep their calm. All that we play this from to keep their calm. If even it's politically related, we're pleading that we don't wish for any retaliations and all that. But that um, we 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 get in touch with the security agencies to to be to be very much proactive in this matter. That was our Chanter Regional Secretary. Uh, of the NPP and we've been talking on today's big story uh, the stabbing to death of uh, a young man during a youth rampage at the party's Asawasi constituency office and the fact that the deep cracks in the NPP seem not to be dying for now all the reasons over Afoko as chairman or no Afoko in or Afoko out this is today's big story my name is Aisha Ibrahim good evening Thank <laughs> you.